Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Jan from Thinking Stamping and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in New Zealand. Now the purpose of today's video is to go through the items which I think are the absolute can't do without basic items of setting up a craft room. Now, I get a lot of people who come to class and they just want to have a nice night out, make some cards, take some cards home to pop in their stash. But sometimes they decide that stamping's their hobby and they, they want to get started and they say to me, I've looked in the catalogue, it's full of stuff, I don't know where to start. And so that's what today's video is about. It's about what are the things that I think you just got to have. There's a lot of stuff that you'll need that'll make your crafting experience better, but there's some things that you've just, you just can't do without them. And so that's what that's, this is what today is about. If you're already an experienced crafter, you might just want to watch along and see if you agree with me or have some additional suggestions. But um, right now we'll get started. So the first thing is this, your personal kit. Now, when people come to my classes for the first time, often they say, oh, what shall I bring? And I say, well, you don't need to bring anything. Just use my stuff for the first couple of times. But if you're going to keep coming, there are some things that you need. And so these are the things which I would tell them to get. I would say you need a pair of really good sharp scissors for fussy cutting. I say if your scissors aren't sharp enough to need a scabbard, they are not the scissors you need. So these are Stampin' Up! paper snips. They're very well priced and they do the job very well. They are not the scissors you grab to whack open your latest online shopping purchase. These are kept for very specific craft purposes. You need some adhesive, something to stick your project together with. Now me, I'm a glue girl. I like glue because of the wiggle room it gives you. So I would go for the liquid multi-glue. Some people don't like it. They prefer tape. And if you tape, then perhaps you would go for the Stamp and Seal Tape Runner. In the catalogue, there's also Stamp and Seal Plus, which is a stronger adhesive for 3D construction. So just the Stamp and Seal. Um, the cartridge is replaceable when you use it up. So that's, that's an option. And glue dots. They are always very useful. Um, if your budget's tight and you can't have everything, well, I'd pick my choice of whatever you like the most and glue dots if you could, otherwise add the glue dots in later. A bone folder, because you need something to make really strong creases. It's really good for like shaping card if you want to shape flower petals. It's good for poking in the corners if you're constructing a box or a gift bag. It's got lots of uses, got to have a bone folder. The take your pick tool is another thing that you need. If you've been to classes, you'll know that you use the sharp end for poking the shapes out of the die cuts. It's great for picking up rhinestones and adding embellishments. And the sticky end is great for um, small bits of paper and sequins and things like that. So a take your pick tool. And the other thing would be dimensionals. Now in the catalogue, there are three. There's the standard, which you can see here is about, whoops, pulled off two that big, the minis which are the same shape but smaller and there are the black ones. Now the black ones are great if you're doing lots of projects that have a dark card base so I think that's something you'd probably add in as you went down the track but you definitely need some dimensionals to begin with. If you can't have both of them then I would go for the large ones because you can always cut them in half or quarters if you really need something small. So dimensionals are, de are a definite. So the other thing I'd add in there if I could, um, if you had the budget for it, would be a silicon craft mat because that's really good for all the messy stuff. Gluing, ink smushing, if you've got a heat glue gun, anything messy and mucky because you just use it and then you just wipe it clean use it over and over again. So that's what I would consider to be like your basic personal craft items. And actually, if you're watching this video to find out how to uh, do a craft or how to set up your craft room, then I'd assume that you've got pretty much all of that stuff at least already. So then it comes, okay, you're going to set up your own craft space. What must you have? Well, at the head of that list for me is the paper trimmer because Saying that you're going to set up a craft room without a paper trimmer to me is like saying you're going to play golf without a putter or you're going to play hockey without a hockey stick. It just doesn't go. When you buy the paper, it comes in either an A4 size or a 12 inch by 12 inch size. So you have to be able to cut it down. And if you're going to you know, cut sentiment strips, you need to be able to cut small sizes. 
The, pa the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer here in New Zealand is $53. It's worth every single cent. It's got a beautiful, stable um, work cutting area. It's wide and it has got an extendable arm so that you can cut up to 45 centimetres if you need to. It's got a scoring blade, it's got a cutting blade, uh, it's got both metric and imperial measurements on it and you can buy replaceable packs of blades. So this is the one thing that you absolutely cannot do without. Now, obviously you need ink and you need paper. Now, Stampin' Up! offers 53 colours and you don't need them all. How you choose them? Well, that's a whole different story. And in fact, I've devoted an entire video to my recommendations for what you should think about when it comes to choosing your first colours of paper and ink to buy. So I'm not going to talk about that now. But I am going to say that no matter what you do with choosing colours, you need this. Basic white cardstock comes in a 40 pack. You need it for the inners, you need it for card fronts, you need it for sentiments you will find you cannot craft without basic white paper. And if you're feeling like basic white's a bit boring, um, very vanilla is also a colour that you could have as a basic. If you can't afford to have both of them in your first go, then go for the white. And along with that, you need envelopes. Once you've made your cards, you need something to send them in. So a pack of basic white C6 envelopes. And if you have gone down the vanilla road, then you can also buy very vanilla C6 envelopes so that it will match your card. But as I say, vanilla is something you could add in later, but you cannot get by without the basic white. That is a must. Also on the ink front, you know, as I said, I'm not going to talk about how you might go about choosing which of the 53 coloured inks you're going to buy, but you definitely need a black. And when you look in the catalogue, you'll see there are two black inks. There's a Memento Tuxedo Black and there is a Stays On Jet Black. They both have a use and it's not the same use. So Stays On ink is an alcohol-based ink, so it's resistant to water. If you're water colouring, it's what you would use to stamp the outlines. It works on non-porous surfaces, so if you're planning to do a lot of stamping onto, say, I don't know, glass or plastic, Stays On. If you are just looking for a black ink to stamp sentiments or outlines with Tuxedo Black, which is a water-based ink, is the one that you would go for. So at some point in your stamping journey, you will want both of these. If you can only afford to have one at the moment, then it is the Memento that I would go for. And as I say, if you want to know about colours, then hunt out my colour video, my choosing colours video. And then it comes to stamps. Now stamps also, that's the fun bit, looking through and going, what stamp sets do I want? But before you get that far, you have to have stamp blocks. The stamps come unmounted. So they just come in a box with the stamps, but you need something to put the stamps on to stamp with. And that's where the blocks come in. Now stamping up have a range of sizes because there is a range of stamps. And as you can see, as I unfold these, there are a lot of sizes. You can buy them as a set, and there is a discount for doing so. It's cheaper to buy them in bulk. However, you may, you know, if your budget runs to that, great. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to choose which ones you want. Now you can see here, this one's big. It's as big as my hand. It's for a background stamp. So if you're not buying a background stamp, you don't need that one at the moment. You buy them, you can just buy them individually. Now here in New Zealand, the little one starts at $8.50 and the largest one goes up to $25 and everything in between. So here's a little tip. If you've decided on a stamp set that you want to buy, so here in the catalogue I'm looking at Artfully Layered. Think, yep, I'd like that stamp set. It's got some leaves, lots of versatility. It's got some nice sentiments. I'd like that stamp set. Underneath in the small print it will say eight cling stamps, whatever. Suggested clear blocks and it will tell you the block sizes. So for this one, for instance, it's block C, D, E and H that you would need. 
this set here, whatever it is, Dahlia Days, Dahlia Days, it suggests B, D, E, and G. So, tip, when you have decided on a stamp set, have a look at what the recommended stamp block is, and if you don't have it, add it into your order. Um, the ones that I probably use the most are pretty much everything except that one. <laughs> but if I was going to start out, I'd, I'd definitely have an H. It took me a long time to buy an H block. Nice and narrow, really good for sentiments. But because it's narrow and the sentiment fits nicely on the stamp, on, on the block, you don't get that kind of rocking motion and pick up extra bits of ink. So the H is really useful. And probably these ones, probably the first four I use the most. Um, but again, as I say, check the stamps, check the catalogue for the recommended block sizes for the set, all the sets that you're thinking of buying. And again, always remember when you're buying them and they seem very expensive, they are a one-off purchase. You don't have to keep buying them. Right, and also aside from whatever kind of stamp you buy, you need to look after them in terms of cleaning them. So you're going to need some stamping mist. Um... You can, this is the thing you absolutely, like, like you've got to have because it, it's the stamp cleaner and it kind of conditions them and keeps them in good order. And after you've spent the money on a stamp set, you want to keep them in good order. So you can just use that and a baby wipe and a, and a, or a clean cloth and that will work. But something you will need at some point, whether it's in your very first order or later on down the track, is a stamp and scrub. Now mine's looking a bit dilapidated because it pretty much gets used every single day. So it's got a side, you squirt the mist on there, rub the stamp into it, and then it dries off on that side. And the little texture of the fibres gets into all the little um, crevices of the stamp and cleans it out really, really well. So uh, whether that's a first order thing with your stamps or whether it's something you get maybe in your second and third order as you can afford it, it's something you will need. The other cleaning option that you'll see in the catalogue is the stamping chamois. Now mine's dry because I haven't used it for a while, but you just wet it under water and you can use that to wipe your stamps clean. I kind of think of that as an intermediate thing, like when I'm working in progress and I just want to change my ink colour or something, I might wipe it up with that. Imagine that's wet. And then when I'm finished my stamping session for the day, I'll get out the stamping mist and the stamping scrub and give them a really good clean up before I put them away. So that's a have to have. The clean, other cleaning devices are something you'll need soon, but not straight away if you can't afford them straight away. And that brings me to the really fun part of setting up your craft room, which is buying the stamps. Now, clearly, you can't buy everything you want all at once. So, some words of advice about picking. Go for something you love, you know, because if you don't like it, you won't use it. So, something that you love, but you also want to look for versatility. Now, by versatility, I mean images that you can see would fit many occasions. So, this artfully layered stamp, for instance, I like because leaves, you know, you can, you know, they can be for something sad, they can be for something happy, they can be for a birthday. Um, flowers also work. Um, and, and if you look in the catalogue, there's lots of leaves and lots of flowers and lots of nature sets. And you could also be looking at what are the words that go with them. So Artfully Layered has got your two main events covered. Happiest birthday wishes, thank you. But also sending all the hugs, that's nice for kind of like thinking of you. Hey there, just for a hello. Art Gallery is a two-step stamp set. Um, don't be put off by that, very easy to use. Florals, but look at the range of sentiments that you get. Thinking of you, your lovely best wishes, thank you, sorry, good luck, happy birthday, congratulations, I miss you. Like if you had that stamp set, you could pretty much cover every occasion. So look for that versatility. An image that isn't too specific, like if you get baby teddy bears, you know, that's great for kids, but could you send it to your best friend for their birthday or their wedding? Not really. Flowers, leaves work really well, and there's no shortage of them in the catalogue. And something with good words that you can use. And the other thing you could think about, especially if you pick a stamp set that doesn't have very many words, or perhaps you like the images but you're not so keen on the words, because that does happen. If you hunt through the catalogue, you'll find sets like these that are just words. 
And they're kind of handy to have because, you know, you can take the images that you've got and you can extend the number of occasions you can use them for. Like this one, Best Year, has got Father's Day. It's got a beautiful birthday, which I've used a lot. Warm Wishes for a Happy Christmas, which I really like. Um, this one, Peaceful Moments, has got probably everything covered. Congratulations, Happy Birthday, Deepest Sympathy, Thank You. Um, so look out for sets like that. But as I say, that's the fun bit. Um, but just pick a set that you think you'll get a lot of use out and out of until you can add in others. Anyway, I hope that little um, craft room setup has been helpful for sorting out what you've absolutely got to have versus what you could wait a little bit longer to have. Um, there is one other item that I will talk about because a lot of people ask me about it. And that is this the Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss Machine, which is the deluxe item in any craft room. And if stamping is your hobby, it is, you'll definitely want to have one. However, they are an investment. Here in New Zealand, the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine will cost you $252. And then you've still got to buy the embossing folders, so, you know, $20 each. You're still going to have to buy die sets and a, a stamp and die bundle is going to cost you, you know, $100 plus or minus. So it is a significant investment and you don't want to do it unless you're sure that stamping's your hobby. Like when I started, it was probably 18 months before I got myself a machine like this. Um, and a lot of people feel like they've got to have one on day one because of, you know, they've come to class and they've die cut and they've embossed and, you know, it's cool. Well, and it is. But the plain fact is you don't have to have one of these on the very first day that you set up your craft room. And that is what my simple stamping series is about. My simple stamping series is about um, things you can make and techniques that you can use before you have bought one of these. So I guess my message really is one of these is something you will want at some point in your craft journey if stamping's your hobby. But you do not have to buy it on the very first day that you start stamping unless you really, really want one. Anyway, I hope all of that's been helpful to you. Um, you can find me on Facebook and I have a blog. The information is going to appear at the end of this video. And if you live in New Zealand and you'd like to shop with me, there are links to my online store in both of those places as well. Thank you.